Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Serie A review for this uh, past week. Before we get started, again a little bit of housekeeping. I hope you really have been enjoying my shorts that I've been issued after some games. You know, for games that, 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 that I watch, I'm probably gonna uh, release a short in the morning. Gives me an excuse to uh, change up the background uh, in, in the back. And I actually really like the format of uh, keeping things uh, entertaining. Or, you know, just get some stuff quickly off my chest without having much thought behind it. So. Uh, I enjoyed it. I hope uh, this shows uh, through to you as, as well. And I want to see how this will go uh, going forward. Uh, another piece of housekeeping you guys have chosen. It will be this Milan away jersey for uh, this season's V video, at least until I make, I may, I'm thinking about the current away jersey. I really like it. Um, so maybe until I get this, we will have the 96, 97. At least it has a Scudetto. Probably if I would have had the choice, I might have, might have gone for the 11, 12. I like that one a teeny better, but you know, it's a really nice jersey. It's my first me a white Milan jersey. So what can go wrong? And I bought it in Australia. So yeah, there you go. Okay, I think that's it for housekeeping uh, so far. Yeah, maybe one last piece. Um, uh, as as, as we we'll see, there will next week will be a weekend round and a midweek round coming up, uh, and then another round. So uh, it's kind of a dense guess a schedule. I might do the Serie A review next week more prior to the Milan Derby. I think for the Milan Derby, I wanna have it a little bit. So it might be a little bit postponed uh, to get the full two rounds in. Have not really decided yet, but just as a heads up. Okay, what can we? Well, what are the general trends for this week? I think the most outstanding is that this was a really, really uh, goalless round. We have one, two, three, four nil nils, which is not very Italian. I mean, it is Italian, <laughs> but not uh, recently. Re recently, Serie A has been full of goals, and uh, even the um, first round was rather goal filled, but now suddenly, suddenly with a goal average of two point three. Something's going on. I want to say, I don't know how the weather situation is in Italy. We had it a little bit cooler, but it might be the summer months. You know, it starts early. Uh, I think this will have, this has an effect there. So uh, this is the, is, is the first one. But um, you see me wearing Napoli. For me, Napoli are so far the surprise of, of the season. Yes, um, uh, teams Napoli is known to start well and then peter out a little bit, but uh, they have been rather impressive so far. Let's see if Spalletti can keep them on track. Um, and on the flip flip side, all the excitement around Roma, despite Roma having two opening wins, but it was only one nils. It's kind of a little, a little bit waning with uh, two in injuries yet. A uh, new signing, Vinaldum with uh, Shin breakage and then the other one at least we know that Saniolo is gonna only miss for around three weeks but still uh those in in injuries because Saniolo looked looked like he is going back to his uh good former self so uh those injuries putting a little bit of a damper on the other hand um Inter rather impressive we'll talk about that a little bit uh despite it being Spezia and yeah the first test of the season for a big team Milan was a teeny bit of a wake-up call, I must confess. Um, physicality works, but I will mention that my thoughts on that uh, in the game when, when we talk about that game as well. But yeah, those are kind of the overall um, uh, views that I have. I have to say I have still a hard time getting into the Serie A season. I so far have only watched the Milan games live and I think I watched, uh, yeah, I watched the Roma game. Uh, yes, yes, you guess they were working, but you know, you know, when every game when you work is more listening than watching. So I still have to get a little bit in, in, in the season. My excitement for Serie A at times was uh, bigger, but I kind of feel that the games, the scheduling, it doesn't really work well at this moment. As I said, enough talk. Let's go into this game. I mean, um, I cannot tell you much about the first uh, two nil nils, but I saw at least the highlights of uh, Inter playing Spezia and yeah, uh, Lula, Lautaro and Lukaku, or I should have said it the other way, way around, uh, really um, worked well together. Uh, I think it was a Lukaku goal was chalked off. Uh, he then assists Martinez, then F and, 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 and you know, uh, seemingly working well. Um, 
As soon as the horned vermin, you know who I speak, made it 2-0, uh, I think the game was in uh, done and dusted. But uh, Spezia never really thre threatened and uh, Korea came on in, in it as well. And you have to look at the bench. You can bring on Checo for Lukaku. You can bring on Gosens for Di Marco. You can play Gagliardini for Cialanoglio. You can bring on Korea for Lautaro. So uh, that's rather impressive. And with the defense staying together as well. Um, May well, uh, this might point strongly towards Inter, but we said the same thing last season. Then they had suddenly a collapse, so uh, we have to see uh, where this will be going. Uh, I wanna, I mean, I have not seen it, but seemingly uh, Berardi scored a screamer against Lecce, uh, the winning goal, Zidane like 2002 Champions League final. Uh, I probably have to check it out myself. Uh, Empoli against Fiorentina. I think Fiorentina had a lot more of, of the game, although Empoli was at least at the beginning uh, quite there. A red card for Luperto and uh, Fiorentina could not take advantage of that. So uh, kind of a little bit of a disappointment there. And I have to say a star sort of season for Fiorentina. While still rather successful, but uh, still there are some questions to be asked. Uh, questions that we are not asking of Napoli. Uh, they call him Quaradona or uh, Quaravaggio or however you want to call him. His name is Quaraskelia. On his jersey, he has Quara, and he might be the answer of who will replace Insigne. Not only the answer, but who will be a bigger icon than Insigne. Okay, hold your horses. It's two games played. But yes, no player in the first two games scored three goals for Napoli. But on the other side, yes, Verona was not a bad opponent. Monza. Seems to be the one promoted team that is not doing very well. So, um, yeah, hold the horror horror self. In any case, expectations were low in Naples. Now they're getting sky high again. And if you haven't seen my uh, re review of the past Premier League weekend, it applies also here in Serie A. Do not go crazy over the first a uh, few games and looking at the table and performances. However, what we can say is that it really looks all good. Uh, maybe the one thing is that Petania could have scored a goal, which would have been nice for him, uh, being uh, from Naples and having played for Napoli. Uh, but it was not allowed for uh, offside. Uh, the other thing that I thought that Naples it, uh, is undervalued, uh, that they got this Kim guy, who seemingly lets Koulibaly forget, and it's, it's even funny, I mean, on the weekend where Koulibaly gets sent off for Chelsea and having a bad game, Napoli seemingly have found seamless replacements. Seemingly. I want to see this Napoli team. I, I will withhold judgment on Napoli at the moment. It looks all great, but I want to withhold judgment until, really, until we have seen uh, them against a bigger opponent. Uh, then we will know a little bit more. Okay, Milan against Atalanta. Yeah, tough game, tough game. Uh, I have to say, when I saw the starting lineup, and no, you know, going to Atalanta is always going to the dentist, and the dentist visit this time around was not a pleasant one at all. While I thought that Leao had a lot of speedy moments at the very beginning of, of the game, really testing At At Atalanta. Atalanta outsmarted Milan in the way that they took Brahim and Rebic completely out of the game. Tonali coming back from injury didn't look his former self uh, yet, I want to say. And seemingly maybe uh, they're still working on to figure out how can we replace Cassie because he gives you a presence that um, is not quite uh, easily replaced. It's hard to pin down because, you know, he is this... Uh, you know, tank-like player, but also one that goes forward. So that is something they still have to fig figure out a little bit. I have to say, I understood why Rebic and Diaz were playing, but on the other side, I really wonder, um, against a physical team like Atalanta, Brahim Diaz is not going to give you what you want. And marking Rebic out of the game was not that hard either. I think you needed physicality up front, and you saw it when later on... Um, the Belgian brigade came on, and especially the Ketelare. Um, he had a few minutes, about you know, 10 minutes span until uh, changes were made by Gasparini again, um, where you could see the brilliance and that he brings a physicality that uh, Brahim cannot match. I also thought that them bringing on the bodies with Giroud and Origi is fit a little bit better. Having said that, uh, as I said, the opening change exchange, I thought that Milan uh, were 
slightly better bad team, but as soon as the physicality for uh, Atalanta got through and that you could and they could uh, close down the passing lanes, Milan were really, really struggling. The goal was not entirely imminent uh, by Malmanowski. It was more of an individual error um, by Milan, um, Tonali and so on. And uh, it took also a wicked deflection by Kalulu because if that deflection is, uh, Magnon is, save, is saving it. But yeah, at that point, overall Atalanta had control of the game and frustrated Milan, a Milan team that did not really know how to react to that. That was my overarching feeling and they didn't really create a chance and what even annoyed me more is that um, Pioli was yelling at Leao stay alta alta stay alta uh, and he came back so uh, kind of disobeying the coach uh, the um, instructions from the coach and you you could, could, could see that yes he gets the ball sooner but he wants to win it all by himself and he continued the second half. Yes, he had maybe one action where he took the ball and then he took the shot. That was not a bad shot, but in, 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 in the end, I really felt, yeah, it's maybe time for him to come, come off and really bring the Belgian brigade on plus uh, Giroud. It's so funny that, you know, Messias uh, is come, coming out, Sal Salamakers is coming in. Clearly, there needs to be some improvement for Milan. However, with these changes, it was kind of, you saw it coming then. Uh, as soon as the Catalara came on, the, uh, there was already a brilliant pass. Then we had before the chance by Leao. Uh, Giroud came on. The game was tilting towards Milan. And I was just hoping that they make a goal. And then, yes, Salah makes a corner. Benazir take, takes it, puts, puts it in. It was a very similar goal to what Lask had scored against Sturm Graz, to, to, to be honest. And I I know my, uh, my wife. Yeah, it was... This, uh, I said to her, this was coming, and I'm glad that they made this goal. That's all I could I, I could say. However, then Gasparini, you know, first the changes by Pioli, then Gasparini changed to what Pio, Pio, Pio was doing with his, and bringing on Murez, Galvini, and Lukman suddenly um, really neutralized the little momentum that Milan had, and then in the end, it is a draw. Yeah. Uh, I think... If you learn the lessons from from from, from, from that, and if you use your um, the squad properly, that's what I think that um, you should know that going to Atalanta this will always be physically nasty. Don't put Brahim on. Brahim is a great player uh, if he gets the space, if the opponent is not so physically, and also if he can come up on an impact step. I think this this is under under undervalued for him. But hey. I'm just a fan. I'm not the coach. Okay. Uh, moving at the same time, I think uh, Bologna, Atalanta, uh, Bologna and Verona played out a 1-1. Then, as I said, I saw um, uh, or followed Roma against Cremonese. And I gotta say, I really was impressed by how Cremonese uh, played. Um, they were not holding back. They were not defensive. They actually went forward and had chances. And with Cyril Dessas coming via again from Rotterdam. He actually hit the crossbar at one point. Cremonese were really in this game. And they already had a great showing in Florence to start season second away game at Roma. And I really thought that in a way maybe they would have deserved a point. Yes, Roma was more active. And yes, uh, Smalling uh, got the equalizer. I uh, got the, the go-ahead goal and the winning goal uh, in the 65th minute after a corner. Honestly, I'm a little bit offended that he's called Smaldini now. That I don't know, it doesn't sit right with me. But you know, okay, you wanna uh, <laughs> you wanna reference my favorite play of all time. But yeah, uh, I think in the, in the end, Roma played at home safe, safe. But I had a feeling that Cremonese could have deserved more. Yes, at the beginning, they're now with zero points out of two games. But what tough away games they were. I'm really looking forward to what will happen there. And then in the evening, I only saw Halas, but Juve, um, that was not very impressive. I mean, Rabio scored a goal that was then called um, chucked off offside. But that was a kind of a lame performance by Juve. And let's see what Sampdoria is going to do uh, going forward. Because every, everyone is saying they're a team that is um, in relegation trouble. But that was a very credible draw for, for them. Yes, uh, Juve has trouble. They have in, in injuries. Uh, not everything is fitting together. 
uh, work, uh, quite nicely. What I do like is that, for instance, a guy like Rovella is coming on, um, you know, a little bit using the academy, but I gotta say, overall, a disappointing result for Juve for sure. Um, if we look now at the current, the current standings, and again, we shouldn't really look at them, uh, so I just leave them there, but we can look already at the adjusted things where we see the bars, who has been doing better than expected and who didn't. We can already see Napoli, Roma, Torino, even Spezia have been doing uh, or already better than they expected, whereas the negative ones are definitely Monza. And, you know, all the three promoted teams are already bottom of the, of the table um, and are the only, only ones that had not uh, made any points, which doesn't bode well. Although I think Lecce and Cremonese have at least good showing. So uh, we got to see Hellas is on, on the bottom. Udine and Bologna Empoli also so and so at the moment. So, yeah, uh, got to see where this is going. As I said, I always like to rather look at the expected standings. Not too many changes except Napoli moving ahead of Juve and Milan coming a little bit closer to Napoli. Inter taking a bit more separation at the moment. And we still have Lecce, Salentano and Cremonese going down. But let's see how this will go. I'm gonna give you now the next two rounds uh, here on this graphic. We see uh, Lazio Inter is the next big matchup on this weekend. Um, Juve Roma. So we get now the clashes, and now I'm probably gonna watch a whole lot more Serie A. Uh, Milan Bologna. That will be an interesting. One. Last time around was a nil nil when they uh, did the interesting jersey that they had. Not to say ugly. I also think of Fiorentina and Napoli. I want to see more of Napoli. So this is a really good round. And I, I think a uh, slipper game, uh, Verona against Atalanta. Ad 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 it seems we may like to be a Serie A week weekend. Though Juve Roma with all the injuries might not be the great of the greatest game uh, out there. And then in the midweek, it starts with Sassuolo against Milan. Um, if I look at this midweek schedule, uh, there's not too, too many great games in there. Inter has a home game against Cremonese, Napoli play Lecce. So, you know, um, kind of so and so. Milan Sasso seems, seems to be on paper the best uh, match up there. Uh, maybe Atalanta Torino, who knows. Any case, so this was it from me from this week from Serie A. Please drop a line below if you uh, enjoyed, uh, if, if you want to add something, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day.